this after 7 o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago. A Jamaican sing in Spanish. Well, that, that shouldn't be anything unusual because actually Jamaica have had a stronger connection with Central America uh, than, than we have had, in, even though we're seven miles away from Venezuela in South America because uh, many, many uh, Jamaicans worked on the Panama Canal, the building of the, the Panama Canal over 100 years ago. In fact, the great George Headley, arguably one of the finest batsmen of all time, was born in Panama. His parents were working on the building of the Panama Canal in the early 1900s. Well, let's come back to the present now, to 2017, to talk about uh, the Equal Opportunity Commission and all of these discussions now going on about sexual harassment in the workplace. And again, yes, we'll say, okay, once more, it's what's happened in the United States and we follow fashion and so on. But uh, we have Lynette Sibaran, sweet chairperson of the Equal Opportunity Commission uh, here with us uh, to give us some, some remedy maybe as to what the EOC has to offer, what perspective it has to offer in relation to all of this discourse about uh, sexual harassment in the workplace, sexual harassment generally, and we'll hear about some, some research that has been conducted as well that could be of benefit to us in Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Bransi, thanks very much for joining us. Great Good to, to, to have here. you with us this morning. What perspective do you have to offer in relation to all of this discussion now about sexual harassment? Well, the first message I want to convey is that the Equal Opportunity Commission has the perfect remedy for complaints of sexual harassment. We are set up to receive and investigate complaints of discrimination in the area of sex and in the area of employment. This, the ground of sex in the area of employment. And sexual harassment is a very clear-cut category of sex discrimination. So that the Equal Opportunity Commission is uniquely empowered to receive complaints, to investigate complaints. What we do is we conciliate complaints. So if we cannot solve the complaint around the table with the employer, then the matter can be kicked up to the Equal Opportunity, Opportunity Tribunal, which is another agency set up under our Act. And in the tribunal, damages can actually be awarded. It has the status of a court. So damages can be awarded, injunctions, reinstatement, whatever is the appropriate remedy. So notwithstanding that we don't have specific legislation in Trinidad and Tobago, the Equal Opportunity Commission can receive, con investigate, conciliate complaints. And if they're not solved at our level, the complainant can take it up to the tribunal. Are you adequately resourced to deal with uh, a number of matters? Or in fact, I suppose my first question should be, have you been dealing with these matters on we an ongoing are, basis? We are absolutely adequately resourced. Uh, we have our team at our head office in Chagonas, comprised of our legal department, which has investigators, the, our attorneys, and then our uh, conciliation team. You sit around the table and you conciliate. And if it is that, the, it is not solved at that level, then we are mandated to prepare a report which, which goes up to the tribunal and then if the complainant wants to take it further, then they can proceed in the tribunal as in a court. Now this is very much in keeping with how sexual harassment claims are dealt with in the United States of America because there sexual harassment claims are dealt with under the Equal Opportunity and Employment Act which is a federal legislation in the United Kingdom, and in the United States of America, I beg your pardon, yeah. and that's where it's dealt with. And is, for, for the complainant, is yes. it a costly process? No, it's, there's no cost before the tribunal. It's, it's a free service. Now, if it is that uh, there's no cost in the commission, which is, uh, of which I am the chairman, uh, it's, uh, b however, if you opt to go to the tribunal, you may wish to retain an attorney. You don't have to, but you may wish to retain an attorney. In the first instance, it's free. And from the experience so far, have, have these matters been resolved via mediation or have they gone to the, to the next level? We have had the uh, approximately 90% of the complaints received by the commission are in the area of em discrimination in the area of employment. Now, we can receive uh, complaints in certain other areas on uh, the provision of goods and services, accommodation, education. But by and large, we receive complaints in the area of education. And many of our complaints are conciliated. We have had complaints of sexual harassment. None of them has reached to the tribunal. Uh, the tribunal became operational in terms of actually hearing matters about two years ago, and they have delivered about 10 important judgments. None of them as yet, though, on sexual harassment. Those are still in the pipeline. 
So yes, the answer, the message to the national community is that we are there with an appropriate remedy. Now this is not again say that specific sexual harassment legislation would be useful. It would provide uh, definitions for, the, uh, for clarity in the national community. It will also be a declaration that Trinidad and Tobago is now taking this seriously. Are we taking it seriously from, from, from well, your own, I mean, from, well, from a, given the, the way our society operates? I mean, I'm, I'm just speaking generally as a citizen. Yes. Do you get the sense that this is a society that takes on issues of sexual harassment in, in, a, in a serious manner? Trinidad and Tobago has taken on many other issues of discrimination against women in a serious manner. We have dealt, we have taken on domestic violence, we have litigation, everybody understands that's wrong and it's a public issue. We have taken on sexual offenses, we have taken on child marriages, we have taken on consensual divorce, we've taken on cohabitational relationships, we have dealt with the, uh, the status of illegitimacy uh, and so on. And so I think that Trinidad is ripe now to take on the question of sexual harassment. We have had a recent, uh, we've had a recent debate in Trinidad and Tobago uh, on the issue, and of course Trinidad and Tobago avidly follows the international conversation. So I think that we, it's, the, it's a teachable moment. The time is ripe for the message which I'm putting out, that we have a remedy in the Equal Opportunity Commission and that we need legislation now. In terms of some takeaways from the international conversation, yeah. what has become very, very clear is that this is a power issue. It's an issue of an equal power between the harasser and the victim. That has been very, very clearly established. Um, then what we have seen in action is what I, what I would want to term social media justice, where justice is meted out harshly and quickly on the basis of the fear of reputational damage in the private sector. But I think that we need to balance that against the need for due process. And perhaps that is where in Trinidad and Tobago we've been seeing a bit of a failing. Because if there is not due process in the sense that the accuser knows exactly what is alleged, and if they don't have an opportunity to defend, then there is a failure of due process and the harasser can get away and then the sequelae would be victimization of the accuser because that is the classical uh, play out, roll out. You complain, it's not dealt with properly, you are isolated and then you are fired. So we want to institute processes where we don't fall into those traps. And of course, uh, one of the best methods of tackling a problem, of course, is to get at the root of the cause to try to see if you can change a culture in a workplace which encourages harassment. And what the international research has been showing is that perhaps a sterile sexual harassment training in a training room in a formal kind of way might not be the most effective method or the necessary. You need to have your codes, you need to have your, your processes. But what, what has been emerging is that it's more important to change the culture of the organization. And that has to do with promoting civility, promoting respect, uh, promoting women. As simple as that, putting women into positions of authority. And, and in Trinidad and Tobago, we're not the worst in the world in that. In terms of the international standards, we are just touching about the 30% participation of women in the executive suite and in the boardroom. But of course, the, the, what we want to do is to go to equality. So that tends to help a lot promote a culture of civility and respect for women in the workplace. Time doesn't allow us to, to really expand because yes. we really need a lot more time to develop Absolutely. a lot of these ideas Absolutely. and issues and so on. Absolutely. But I just want to get your perspective, Ms. Mm -hmm. Sivaran, on just this idea of the attitudes towards sexual harassment in Trinidad and Tobago in the sense that is it one, easy to define sexual harassment and two, uh, let me just, just give you a, a, a sure. sense. So, mm -hmm. so happen, I can't tell a woman she's looking nice anymore. Yes, well, yes. So, 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 uh, so, uh, so she's so, so, so uptight now that I can't say that. Yes, uh, how do you, if people say I'm dressing you with my eyes, so, so I mustn't even look in your direction anymore, I must look up yes, in the sky. Yes. Uh, how how are, do you deal with are, that? There are definitional issues and there are fringes and there are gray areas. And at the end of the day, every situation has to be judged 
on its own merits. The essence of it is the unwelcome nature of the approach. So that if it is that you make uh, a remark or you, or you make a pass or you uh, uh, give, give a little pressure for date, a date or mm. so, the, the essence of it is whether it is unwelcome or not. Now, there are certain clear-cut situations which constitute sexual harassment, and indeed they constitute crimes in any event, sexual crimes. So that inappropriate touching, that's an assault. Uh, pressure for dates, uh, where you then victimize the, 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 the person at the other end, because if they refuse you, then you're going to affect them. You're going to put them into a remote location. You're going to refuse to promote them, refuse to send them on training, ultimately fire them. And so one of the characteristics of this situation is you have to try and prevent this isolation of the victim. And that is why something called bystander training is very important. Everybody in the organization has to rally around. And you know, a strange thing... But are you, you getting that? Sorry to interrupt, well, but, but we, we, do, we, do, we, you, do you find a situation where people who actually raise these issues yes. in a quiet way yes. are immediately pushed back, not so much by management, yes. by their peers, say, what yes, to you? It's, a, your it's, story? A, it's a question of a culture change. And, and what is so revealing in the current conversation is that a lot of men are saying, but we didn't know, we didn't understand you felt that way about it. So there's a great deal of communication that has to go on because a man might not realize that a persistent objectification of a woman in a workplace, every time you hit the door, how you looking so, what you did last night, you know, how you looking so, you know, bright, um, your, your, your foot looking so, your, your attributes they want to talk about. And that objectifies women and it puts women under pressure. Men don't seem to fully realize how uncomfortable it makes, you know, if it's welcome, fine. And you are a human being, you would know if it's welcome or not. So a lot of sensitivity training has to go on. And you know, what has been found is that the training is best received when it's done by men. Okay. Yes, when women do the training, it tends to, you know, polarize. You know, the men say, well, okay, we're either, it, it polarizes generally. You're either a harasser or a victim. So the, the training really needs to get away with that kind of uh, identification of a person in a role. Where you involve the entire workplace in preventing it, you see something happening, you see somebody jacking up a, a, a woman in a corner, you intervene, you call the woman, let's go and have a coffee, listen to me now, what about that report you have for me? You intervene. At a later stage, you may have a conversation with your brother and say, you know, that he was putting the lady under some pressure, you didn't, you didn't gather that she... So there are many workplaces in which the culture needs to be reformed. Let me give you the, because time is good, but let me just mm -hmm. give you the other side, uh, mm -hmm. that, that somebody is leading you on. All the time, they're, they're teasing yes. and all that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, I find myself faced with a sexual harassment Well, uh, that's accusation. your risk. Hey, watch yourself. Don't but, fall but, but into what that. But what's she, she leading me on well, for? You're, aren't you an individual? Aren't you? Don't you have autonomy? But, 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 okay. If you see a trap, they avoid the trap. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's just, so, so it's okay for them to set the trap. But if I fall for it, I'm in, in, in trouble. trouble? Yes, you're in trouble. All right. Well, fair <laughs> enough. But, but, but just on, on the point of view of, and before we conclude, we'll give people the contact information if they want to get mm -hmm. information from the EOC and yes. how do they proceed. But given the, 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 the way this global conversation is, yes. and of course, because of the states and, mm -hmm. and all that is happening, yes. politicians, entertainment people, and, and so on, yes. and more and more names are coming up. Of course, people are uh, falling like flies. Right. Are hasn't started in Trinidad as yet. Are you, are you bracing for the avalanche in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, we are, we are the Equal Opportunity Commission and the women's movement in general, many NGOs across the board. We have been having an intense conversation in Trinidad and Tobago about this. The IGDS, uh, which is the Institute for Gender Affairs, the network of, of, uh, <coughs> the network of NGOs for the advancement of women, the yeah. Coalition Against Domestic Violence, the Rape Crisis Society, Woman Mantra, uh, there are many organizations in Trinidad and Tobago who, who ha have been having an intense conversation and we certainly, the Equal Opportunity Commission, have taken the lead. We started off this theme since International Women's Day in March and this conversation has been going on. Now, the, it has then to translate into the trading rooms, into the human resources departments and there is a lot of expertise residing within human resource departments in corporations. But as I said, the research is showing that the best, the most effective kind of training is intense training, training uh, from your direct supervisor and somehow or the other, the training seems to be better if it's coming from men.
Indeed, and it's a, and, and it's <laughs> it's a, it's a it's at least we're useful for something <laughs> in, 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 in some reason. Oh, yeah. if, 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 yes. it's, if it's only training, uh, if people want to get more information, yes. if they want advice, want counseling, yes. and so on, yes. via the EOC, what do they yes, have to they do? Go on to our website, www.econopportunity.org.tt. Uh, we have a communications department. We are fully fledged uh, commission paid for by the government, providing a service to Trinidad and Tobago, which what I want to put out there, use us. Indeed. Use, we do a lot of training, uh, we do a lot of research, we do a lot of advocacy, and, but, but at the same time, our core function is dealing with specific complaints. So that's the message, you, you have a remedy with the UC. Thank you very much for joining us, Lynette Sibara and Sweet, as uh, we continue here uh, this morning. It, it is a serious issue and something that people make, make light of and don't realize uh, the implications of their behavior. And as we've, we've found out over the last few weeks, as uh, Kirk Waith was mentioning to us uh, from Fix and TNT, many people in the business environment have actually been asking of uh, their, their colleagues in the workplace, have I been inappropriate in my behavior in any way, shape or form? Uh, and people should be more aware of uh, their behavior in the workplace and not just take it as something very, very light because as I said, the avalanche might be coming even if snow doesn't fall in Trinidad and Tobago. 734 in TNT. We'll be back right after this.